Advanced Accounting 14 Intercompany Transfers Downstream Sale. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our Facebook page, our email, and our phone number. This information was taken from Advanced Accounting Chapter 6 in McGraw Hill. And I'll also refer you to our Management Accounting 16 video in a few minutes. Let's first of all define intercompany transfer, which we've talked about in Management Accounting. In consolidation, the first bullet point. All intercompany activity is eliminated so that the result is you end up with consolidated financials that present a single company as if the entities were all a single company. What might be new here is, is that we don't make a distinction between wholly owned or minority owned. The percentage of ownership doesn't really matter on intercompany transfers from one entity to another. It all gets eliminated. The last bullet point here is unrealized intercompany profits, which we define as unconfirmed profit from an intercompany transfer, and we'll see an example in a minute. And I now refer you to Management Accounting 16, where we talked about transfer pricing. Jumping over to Excel, I'll give a simple example. Colorado Denim makes denim a raw material. Levi's Jeans buys the denim for $10,000. They're the parent company. They sell the denim to Grunge Gene Manufacturing, which is a subsidiary, for $15,000. They have a $5,000 profit on the parent Levi's sale to Grunge, the subsidiary. Grunge then sells the denim to Old Navy, the retailer, for $25,000. So they have a sale to the subsidiary of Old Navy. Let's assume that Old Navy has its own clothing line and needs denim as well. Grunge has extra and they sell it to Old Navy. So we have a gain that Levi's incurs, the difference between $15,000 and ten, And we have a gain that Grunge has on the difference between $25,000 and fifteen. So let's see what happens as far as journal entries. Levi's has denim revenue of $15,000 when they sell it to Grunge. They have denim expense of $10,000 when they buy it from Colorado Denim. Grunge, on the other hand, the subsidiary, has revenue when they sell the denim to Old Navy. They have expense when they buy the denim from Levi's. $10,000. Uh, 15000 right here. So what happens when we create an income, a consolidated income statement is we eliminate these intercompany transfers. So the revenue is debited to a zero balance. The expense is credited to get a zero balance on both sets of books. Debit credit, no balance. Credit, debit, excuse me, no balance. Debit, credit, no balance. Let's talk about a land transaction. Let's assume that Levi's, a parent company, has purchased land for $20,000. They sell that land to Hollywood Jeans, which is a subsidiary, for $35,000. So Levi's has a gain on sale of $15,000 because the parent Levi's sold the jeans to Hollywood, a subsidiary. So here are the journal entries on Levi's books. They buy land for $20,000. They pay cash. 20,000 from up here. Further for Levi's, they sell the land for, they sell the land for 35,000. They get cash in the door of 35,000. There's the 35,000 in sales proceeds gain on the sale of land. So the gain for Levi's is the $20,000 cost compared with the $35,000 revenue, and they have a gain on sale of $15,000 to record gain on sale of land to Hollywood. Now on Hollywood's books, they buy the land at $35,000, they pay cash, and that's the only thing that's on Hollywood's books. But we need to eliminate that gain on sale of land, and we do it basically by taking the gain off the books by debiting, we had originally credited, 
and to reduce by crediting the land account for fifteen thousand dollars. So if you look at a T account for the land on the and on the consolidated books, Levi's bought it for twenty and then sold it and took it off the books at twenty thousand. So Levi's buys at twenty, sells it twenty thousand dollar cost basis. Hollywood buys it for thirty five and then we have an adjustment by crediting for 15, so the bottom line is the land on a consolidated basis goes back to a basis of $20,000, which was Levi's original cost basis. That's how it looks on the consolidated balance sheet. The next thing is, as I flip back to, to PowerPoint, Upstream versus downstream sale. So a downstream, think of downhill, parent to subsidiary. Upstream is from a subsidiary to a parent. And the issue here and the reason we're talking about it is the elimination entries are going to differ depending on whether it's downstream or upstream. So flipping back to Excel, we have a downstream sale. And we do it in a couple of steps. Levi's buys 80% of Hollywood jeans. The book value for stock, for common stock, the book value of the stock is $240,000. The fair value, which is equal to the book value of the non-controlling interest, that is the 20% remaining, is $60,000, and that's given to us in the question. So Levi's is now an 80% owner. Levi sells land to Hollywood Jeans for thirty-five thousand. Their cost was twenty thousand. That's in the examples that we saw on the prior spreadsheet. And let's assume that Hollywood's going to hold that land for the long term. So we have Levi's buying eighty percent of Hollywood Jeans, and we have Levi's selling land to Hollywood Jeans for a gain, thirty-five less twenty, the fifteen thousand that we talked about on the prior page. For the year X1, we have some financial results. Levi's has total income of $155,000. $140,000 was from regular operations, that is, selling blue jeans. And $15,000 is the gain from the sale of land, which is linked to the $35,000 less the twenty, dollars for total income of $155,000. Hollywood Jeans also has income. They have net income of $50,000. They declare a dividend of 30,000. Levi's also declares a dividend. It happens to be 60,000. So we have some financial results to talk about. How does Levi's account for their ownership of Hollywood? Let's assume they use the basic equity method. What does that mean? Two things. Levi's, as we've seen in other examples, is going to recognize their share of net income and dividends, the share that they own of Hollywood but they do not adjust for unrealized intercompany profit. So to wrap up this first section, let's talk about some journal entries. We have the entry we've seen many times before. We debit an asset account called investment in Hollywood. We pay cash to represent the purchase of the 80% of Hollywood jeans. We get paid a dividend, and that dividend happens to be 80% of the Hollywood dividend declared at 30000 which is $24,000. So we get cash, and in order to avoid double counting the dividend as income, we reduce the investment account, and that's how we record our share of equity method. That's the end of advanced accounting 14. We'll continue the example soon. We have our hour-long essential topics videos, our YouTube channel, Ken Boyd STL, for one-on-one -on -one live tutoring using gotomeeting.com. Individually in small groups, here's our website, our email, and our phone number. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next time.